Okay. Show me. Hi there guys, welcome back to the Dutch Sheet channel. Thank you very much for tuning in for part five in our perfect quadcopter build series. So in the previous video we added a flight controller to our quadcopter and in this video we're gonna check if our motors run. We're gonna make sure that the firmware on our 4-in-1 ESC is up to date. We want the latest firmware on that 4-in-1 ESC. So at this point that's not beta flight, it's actually the firmware running your ESCs. BL Heli or BL Heli 32, you might have heard of it. That's the firmware running your 4-in-1 ESC or your ESCs. And in this video we'll make sure we've got the latest version of that firmware on the ESC. See, we'll need that in a coming video in the tuning part of our series. And the third thing we'll do is make sure that all our motors run the correct way. See, Betaflight will assume our motors, or, or our propellers rather, will run in a certain direction, clockwise or anti-clockwise. And if that's not correct, if that's not the case, if your motors spin the, the wrong way around, your quadcopter will not fly very well. Not very predictably. Uh, no, it'll, it won't fly at all. Well... Well, no, it, it won't fly very, very well. So, three things in this video. Do our motors actually run? Do we have the latest version of the BL Heli firmware on our 4 and one ESC? And do our motors spin the right way around? Now, you might actually wonder why I'm doing this at this point. You could argue, well, I want to do that uh, beta flight firmware and the BL Heli firmware at once, in one swoop. Right, so I'm first going to be installing a receiver and uh, hook the camera up and the uh, VTX, right? That's definitely possible. However, as you can see, there are no wires attached to my flight controller yet, apart from the ribbon cable at the front. So if anything would be wrong with my 4-in-1 ESC, it's very easy to now uh, remove my flight controller, right? four plastic nuts and I'm uh, well I have uh, full access to my 4-in-1 ESC. If I'd already have that uh, receiver installed, the wire to my camera and to my VTX, it'll be uh, less convenient to do any work on your 4-in-1 ESC by then. So this in my mind is the moment to check if all your motors run and uh, to update uh, the firmware on your 4-in-1 ESC while you're at it basically, right? And uh, well, uh, and we'll be checking uh, the motor direction as well. Because we'll be doing that in the BL Heli suit. Okay, let's get into it. All right, I know this looks uh, horrible, but it doesn't really matter. We'll switch to the on-screen uh, capture in a second. Here is our quadcopter. Obviously, we do not want to have our propellers on the quadcopter yet at all. Uh, the, the motors will spin up. So you definitely do not want your propellers on the quadcopter right now. So what we'll do is hook up the USB cable to your computer. And there is a BL Heli suit version for PC, so Windows, Linux and macOS. I'll have a link to the BL Heli suit that you will see in a second in the description of this video. So you also want to hook up a LiPo, otherwise you can't reach the 4-in-1 ESC. See, the 4-in-1 ESC isn't powered by, from the USB. So we want to update the firmware on the 4-in-1 ESC, therefore we need to hook up a LiPo. So let's now turn to uh, the on-screen capture. Alright, like I mentioned before, there is a BL Heli suit for Windows, which is what I'll be using. There's one for Linux and there's one for the Apple OS. And on Windows, you don't even have to install it. You just unzip the zip you've downloaded from the link I supplied in the description of this video. Here is here's that zip file, BL Heli suit 32, uh, and then there's the uh, version number. Right, so you download that zip and you simply unzip it and that's all you need to do. Here is the unzipped folder and you can run it from here. So again, there's no need to install it. That's probably different on Apple OS. If people uh, use this uh, BL Heli suit on Apple, uh, please let me know in the comment section below. And on Linux, 
I'm not sure. Hmm, probably also runnable from, uh, well, after uh, extracting the zip file. So we go and run the BL Heli Suit 32. Hot cheek day. So the COM port at the bottom over here should be at the correct one, otherwise click it and select USB serial device and hit connect. Then you need to read the setup for all your four ESCs. Hot cheek day. So this here is what you want to see. All uh, information for the four ESCs is populated. If something is physically wrong with the wiring of your quadcopter, one or more of the ESCs will simply display dash 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 and no information. Uh, it doesn't matter what information is displayed, just as long as you get feedback information back from all your four ESCs, like you see it here. So that's, that's good. All four ESCs are live. And the first thing we want to do now is update the firmware on, uh, on our four ESCs. So we say flash peel heli. Now, <laughs> uh, I already know that the firmware on my 4 and one ESC is actually the latest one. Um, let's track back and see what the current version is. And that's 32.7. You can see that over here. And when I say flash BL heli, 32.7 is the version I'm presented with as being the last one. Is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. So yeah, this is a relatively new product, right? But still, it's a little surprising to have the latest version on this uh, 4-in-1 ESC from Mamba slash Daito. It's a good thing, of course. However, I will show you how the update process is done. So you, uh, some, in some cases you'll uh, be presented with a list of newer firmwares. In this case there's one firmware. And I hit OK. And the warning, uh, blah de blah de blah, yes. OK, and then it'll flash the firmware onto uh, ESC1. Takes a little while. And you will have to be doing this for four ESCs. But uh, well, it's not difficult. It's simply a matter of uh, waiting a, uh, a minute or so. And after it's done flashing and verifying, it'll, uh, well, say, uh, blah, 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 blah. Okay, um, if you have not changed any setting on that ESC, it'll not offer you to f um, change or yeah, ch write the changes to your ESC. Uh, you might not see that happen in this session. If I had changed any of the settings of, the, of any of the ESCs, after the flashing is done, uh, the BL Heli suit will offer me to rewrite re my, my own changes. I hope that makes sense. But uh, we are dealing with a fresh 4 in 1 ESC, so it'll probably not offer to. No, it, it won't. Okay, so I'm uh, gonna speed the rest of this up. Uh, the, I'm gonna be flashing the third and the fourth, and uh, well, that's gonna be exactly the same as on the previous two. Hachiki day. That's the uh, well the updating of our firmware done. So in this case uh, nothing really happened. Uh, I already had 32.7 on all ESCs, but uh, on a later date uh, there will probably be a newer firmware for these ESCs. So uh, if you are watching this uh, how-to on a later date, you definitely want to update the firmware on the, all your ESCs. If you are working with a an older 4-in-1 ESC, there is a good chance that the firmware on your ESCs would have been older and in that case it is very important to update the firmware. See, we'll need that in our tuning uh, part of this how-to series. Uh, will we be needing it in other parts? Well, it's always, well, always. Hmm. 
Uh, in most cases it's uh, a good thing to have the latest firmware version on your 4-in-1 ESC. In this case I know that this 32.7 will work reliably on this 4-in-1 ESC. Yeah, and there can be bugs, right? So in this case I've already tested it for you. If you are uh, using a, a different 4-in-1 ESC I can't tell you if it, in most cases, cases uh, the latest firmware version of the BL Heli suit works well. Alright, with the latest uh, firmware version on our 4-in-1 ESC, we can now check if all our motors actually run. Now we can do that in the beta flight configurator, as you might know. We can also do that right here in this uh, BL Heli suit. So we then move to the motors tab. Alright, obviously you still don't have propellers on your motors and okay let's spin up our, our motors now I don't even know if you can hear them but you should be able to see that all motors actually run now if any of the motors would would just stutter jitter back and forth that's a definite indication that one of the three wires going through your from your motor to the 4 one ESC isn't connected well. Maybe uh, the soldering joint from one of those three wires to the 4 one ESC isn't, isn't good. And if that's good you might have a break in the wire, but since we are building a, a brand new quadcopter I'd doubt it. Uh, a de dead on arrival motor, I've never seen that happen, but who knows. <laughs> yeah, in most cases though it'll be a solder, solder, soldering connection that's uh, not done well. All our motors spin up, which is uh, great. So that's the second thing we wanted to do in this video. And the third one is to check if all our motors spin the correct way. I'm still in the motors test motors tab. I do still understand that <laughs> I don't have propellers on my motors. And I'm gonna spin up all motors. And yes, you can do the same thing. Test the motors in the Betaflight configurator. You might know that. But you can also do it, as you can see, in the BL Heli suit. And it's more convenient because the, the reversing of your motors, if that's needed, will also be done in the BL Heli suit. Now what I basically do is simply feel if all my motors run the correct way. And that means that motor 1, which is the motor on the right rear, should run clockwise, so this direction. And yeah, I simply feel and it, it does. Now you could put a little bit of tape on your motor axle or the motor itself to make it easier to see or feel the motor direction, but uh, this is pretty easy, especially on a 5 inch quadcopter, not that hard. So again, motor 1, which is the one on the right rear, should spin clockwise, which it does. Then motor number 2, which is on the right front, should spin counterclockwise, and okay, it does. Then motor number 3, which is the one on the left rear, should spin counterclockwise as well. Counterclockwise and it, it does. Ah damn, all motors run the right way. Then the motor number 4, our last motor, uh, which is on the left front, should spin clockwise. And it does. Ah damn. All my motors run the correct way, I've never come across that, but okay, <laughs> yeah, so in my case I don't uh, need to uh, reverse any of the motors, however I will show you how that's done. So I'm gonna stop the motors and I'm gonna return to the ESC setup over here, ah yeah, and I'm gonna reconnect and I'm gonna read the setup for all my Yes, she is. A cheeky day. Now let's assume for a second that motor number one, which is the one on the right rear, spins the wrong way around. Right? It's running, uh, let's see, counterclockwise while it should be running clockwise. <coughs> now that's pretty simple. I deselect 
ESC 4, 3 and 2, since I only want to change something on motor or ESC number 1. And then over here you see motor direction which is set to normal and I click this arrow once and now it's set to reversed, yay, which is what I want. Then I go and write the changes to the ESC over here, write it up, hachikidei, ESC number one, right, okay, and that's it. I have now reversed motor or ESC number one. That's pretty simple, isn't it? So you have to run again through all your four motors, see if they spin the right way around, and if they don't, simply reverse them in this tab. Pretty simple, isn't it? Yeah, so I'm gonna re-reverse or set my motor direction back to normal for that motor number one and do a right setup again. Hard cheeky day, and that's it. That's all we need. And that was uh, step number three in this video. And uh, should be really simple. However, if you are left with questions, maybe you are new to all this and uh, you might have questions. Maybe you hit a snack. Hit me up a comment down below. Hit me up a comment down below. I'll be able to answer uh, your questions. Uh, maybe your other viewers may be able to help you out. So yeah, never uh, hesitate to ask. And in the next video, we'll be installing the firmware on our flight controller, which is, uh, in my case, uh, will be Betaflight. So we'll be installing the latest version of that and uh, doing a, a first setup of that. That'll be coming up pretty soon. Be on the lookout for that. Catch you on the next video. Bye bye.